in within the Department of, uh, of uh, Design and Applied Technology, we have several courses which include the word engineering in their title. And two of those courses are two of the upper level courses. One is honors engineering and the other is principles of engineering. So principles of engineering basically is a course where uh, it's designed so that the students are working on projects. And the projects are designed so they're difficult to do. I think most of the students, when I give the assignment and tell them what the problem is going to be, sort of go, wait a second, I don't think I can do this, because they don't have the knowledge to do it. And so as part of the process, I give them, we, we give them the information about the project and the problem, and then we give them the materials to use to solve the problem. This particular class, what, what we're working on right now is something that uh, I call materials and processes. Uh, it's the first class that I, where we have used the tools that you'll see over along the window, and there's also hand tools. This is obviously not a shop, this is a, a lab, and a lot of the work we do is on computers, so there's all these com various computer stations. I do want them to learn a little bit about materials and about making things using common hand tools and so forth. So this is the unit where we do that. Now, aside from being that, it's also the unit where we cover what works called fluid mechanics. So the students are working with pneumatics, and hydraulics and we use uh, syringes for cylinders. We have this uh, set of two arms which are operated by syringes and the students are designing and building first of all mock-ups of a mechanical hand and then they will build the the actual finish hand using more permanent materials, the mater that's cut there for the materials and processes part. And then they'll have to use that on the arm to perform a task. So this is what I would call, describe as the test bed. Now it looks a little bit like a game, but what I've tried to do here is set up in, in a, a machine which uh, has certain limitations. Uh, the height of the arm is a limitation, the position that you, the place that you fasten the hand is a limitation. And so the students have to design their uh, mechanical uh, hand to not only fit the machine but also perform the function which is to pick up uh, these, the heart out of the, the little man here and there's a, I've lost it now, it's probably one of the students has it, there's a two inch round wooden ball that they have to pick up. Um, so one of, the, one of the goals for this is to put the students into a situation where they have to solve a lot of problems and where their first solution is not going to be the, the, the best solution. Uh, one of the things we teach the students about engineering is it's iterative, it's a process of continuous improvement and um, so I tend to think that when the students have designed something and made it, tried it out, and it doesn't work, that's when they're in the zone. That's where, they, it's where they're the place that we really want them to be because then they're solving uh, legitimate problems that are important to, their, to them, they're important to their success. Every student uh, is designing their own prototype. They prove that their design works by building a, uh, a mock-up using materials that are easy to work with, foam core and cardboard and brass fasteners. And, uh, and they've done this before in a previous unit where we've designed mechanisms. They've mocked them up like this before. Once they have this done, then they're going to use the, the equipment that we have here, the small, small hand tools and small tabletop tools to use wood and metal fasteners to make a more permanent version of their device. Then they're going to put this on the arm and use it to perform heart surgery. Uh, what, you'll notice that uh, most of the students have this program up on their screen. It's called Evernote and it's a cloud-based storage area with a local version on their, uh, that they're, you're looking at here. And what it is, it's a way of keeping notes. It's a lot like OneNote only it's uh, more, it, it does a lot more in terms of uh, being able to, well, how would you describe the differences? So when you use Evernote, you're pretty much documenting all the progress you make on your, on your uh, experiment and project. 
So what you do in your note, you can document every step you take and what you did that class and what you have to do to improve for next class and also reflecting on what you've done. So you could also add pictures like I have here. You can do that straight from your phone. All you do is you add a picture, you take your project, take a shot, add it, and then you press sync up here in the top left. Then it shows up right here. And as you can see, it's pretty big. So you can right click it and you can change the size with, the, with another app on the computer. And it automatically resizes. And you can also hit the annotate button in the top right. And with the, when the image loads, you can add text to it. Um, you can also circle things if you wanted to, like that. You can crop it if you want. And when you think you're finished, just hit File, Save and Exit. And it loads right to the Evernote. And that's pretty much it. What Kevin is doing is he's built a mock-up for his hand that includes a number of really small parts and, and Kevin has worked with uh, the 3D printer before so he already knows how to use it and so um, he now wants to print some other parts and so he just asked me for the, the SD card reader because the way we transfer his file to the machine is with the SD card so you can go ahead and do that. Now what you're looking at here is the MakerBot screen our 3D printers are MakerBot printers and this is the piece that he's drawn using CAD software called Inventor. So he's drawn a three-dimensional piece, he's exported it to something called an STL file. STL files are the standard file that's used for 3D prototyping and they're basically a point cloud where you have an object and uh, just think of it as being covered with dots, you know, and that, those dots, that's the cloud or the mesh. And so what he's doing now is he's processing that part uh, that he drew uh, in MakerBot. It's called post-processing. And what it essentially does is slice the piece into very fine cross-sections. Because when the printer prints, it print, prints those cross-sections. So sometimes they call this post-processing the slicer. Right. So the way I have my uh, setup here for the arm is I need this piece that's going to attach to the actual arm and I'm using one of these little suction cups and I want to be able to attach this to here so the way I have this set up is I have one of these which are little fittings that fit the suction cup to this brace that way you can swap them in and out so because some of these holes are very very tiny I need them everything to be precise so what I've been doing is I've been actually going in here, like Mr. McFadden talked about, using a program called Inventor, which lets me draw it up on the computer, and then I can actually export the file over to the printer and get everything with the exact dimensions I want. So this I did last class, but the issue was is that this is too small. So what I've done today is I actually redrew my measurements, took it back into Inventor, and re-edited the file, and now I'm printing out the uh, the correct size. So once that's done, I have to go over there and pull it out and then refit it to make sure it's the right dimensions. Here, so this plate actually, there's a clip back here and the whole piece comes out. So this is stuck. So you might need to use like a little tool to get it out. There it goes. That was not the most graceful way to take it off, but it's off. So now this is completely done. This is sized up from the other version and we should be good to go. Now I just gotta test fit it and make sure it works. And if not, I just make another one, come back and try it all over again. I'm very, very happy with the, the, what happens with the students in the principal's engineering class. And I think when they come out of it, they have a level of confidence about problem solving that they really haven't had before.